Yeah. Why did you choose that one? Because uh, uh, um, oh, oh yeah, yeah. empty nesters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Excellent movie story here. I think it's factory. Experiences the, the gap between the rich and the poor, the peasantry and the. Okay. Who's that? That's some powers. Do you recognise that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. I could probably do more interesting. Okay. Do you need that? Pass now. Now we finish, and this is a, a kind of Western uh, areas about the Chinese people in all areas like of uh, education. And now we are sure that the uh, Chinese young people, and I mean uh, in our state, in teenagers' ideas about why old people in our in rural areas lack of education. And we have a, a short video to show that. This is a, uh, is it a friend's also in the Vasco University. Yeah, it's the shoes friends. And she's uh, grandfather and grandmother is in the rural areas. So we interviewed uh, her and asked her some uh, questions about her ideas. The rural part of are your grandparents live in the rural part of China? Yes, my grandparents live in the rural part of China. Have they ever been to the university of third age? No, they have never been when they went to the university before. And why? Because they think they are older and they want to enjoy their, uh, themselves in the rest of their life. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, in the rural parts of China, most mm -hmm. of the people don't know that kind of university, especially for the older people. Okay. Do they have any other activities in their daily life? Yes, they have. For example, um, they can do exercises in the park, like working uh -huh. um, and talking with other older people uh -huh. and reading newspapers. Okay. Uh, when you become older, would you like to go to that kind of university? It depends. Because I really want to travel all over the world when I'm older. Okay. But if I have opportunities, maybe uh -huh. I will choose to go to that university for uh -huh. study. Okay, thank you. In China, um, confusion is one of the most important cultural features in China. And his uh, theories also influenced the Chinese uh, old people's education. Although he has the most in, uh, influence, he has the crucial ideas about the lifelong learning. On the other hand, uh, Confucius' uh, leading attitude also takes some negative influence on Chinese old people's education. Because Conf Confucius has uh, one theory that is people in their different age stages have a different target. I mean, uh, people study just in 30 to 40 years old. When he become older, uh, for, uh, 15 uh, or 16 years old, he must enjoy his life and do nothing. If he didn't catch and uh, take this uh, target, then he must also take uh, take his learning. But Confucian also, uh, in his uh, living attitude, he recommended people should uh, 
enjoy his life and do not do any learning in his uh, when he become older. So Confucian uh, theory takes uh, some negative influence on uh, adults, uh, I mean, uh, in older people's education. On the other hand, Confucian uh, uh, theory just influenced some uh, uh, higher hierarchies, people, rich and uh, noble people. Uh, in the poor areas, uh, in rural areas, the old people also influenced by the Buddhist uh, theory. The Buddhist theory have a uh, similar with the uh, uh, Western concept of the great chain of being. That means people have a strict and a religion uh, structure, hierarchy structures in his life. Um, in Buddhist, uh, in Buddhist theory, means uh, people what what he's become is uh, is about his previous life, and uh, he do what is about his previous life, and uh, if he do. Uh, present he do is better, and in the next life he will be better. So it's not about learning, it's about not about study, because it's, it's his dynasty. So the Buddhist theory also takes some negative influence on older people's mind, because they think study is useless, learning is useless. Is useless. What he do and what, what he will become is just the dynasty. He cannot change it. So Confucian theory and the Buddhist theory both of them some take the, some negative influence on, uh, to some extent on the Chinese older people's education in rural areas. And now, Shu uh, will take some government aspects about the education in Chinese rural areas. Yes, I will show the government parts to all of you. Uh, first, uh, let us just talk about the, um, how much money do you think the UK government spent on the um, education part per person per year? Just a guess about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What do you think? Per person. Per person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The university um, Overall. All, yes. All Overall. Of education budget by population. Okay. Twenty-five hundred. Two thousand five hundred. Yeah, let's say a couple of thousand. Five. Five thousand. Somewhere around that five. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just a guess about China. About Chinese government. Yeah. More? No. And a lot more. In RMB or pounds? Pounds. Yes. Four. Um. It's ten times between RMB and pounds. Yeah. 130 pounds a year. 130? Okay, let's show the evidence. Um, according to the Chinese education uh, economy part, they, in 2008, they show that in China, uh, the government uh, put, the, um, put some money into the education is much more than 100 billion pounds. And in UK, uh, it's almost 80 pounds, 8 billion pounds. But we can look at the population. In China, we have more than 1,300 million people. And, uh, but in the UK, only 60, 60 million people in the UK. So we just make a con conclusion is that, look at this one. Um, the population is, uh, chi in China is maybe 13 times more than uh, UK. But the spend on education, the spend on per, per capita is just the converse. Yes, in UK is maybe more uh, 13 times more than Chinese government. So, um, this is one reason for um, rural part of China, the, the old people lack of education. Another another reason maybe about the <coughs> uh, the uh, in in imbalance um, of the. Uh, the education um, education part um, because um, these opportunities um, according to the the total illiteracy rate for people over 60 in China is 42 percent but the, the the numbers are different in city and the rural part the rural part is twice more than the city part of the illiteracy rate and uh, another one is we can we can see our uh, we can see the Chinese China map, the map of China. Um, in the east part, um, 
there are a lot of provinces just uh, richer than the um, west part. So we can see from here, um, uh, here is Beijing. The literacy rate here is only uh, 19%, and the Shanghai is here is only 24%. But we can see this. This is Tibet. Here is Tibet. The literacy rate is high. Is more is that uh, is likely eighty one percent. So maybe lots of people do not have do not be educated. So um, this is another um, part can reflect the people in rural part of China lack of education. So I think Paul can give us the conclusion and uh, make some recommendations of our topic. Okay. So as Shu said. Um, we decided to review quite a lot of the information that we found from the research. So we've um, suggested some conclusions as well as some recommendations. Um, so China's population is becoming a lot older. Older adults in rural China don't receive nearly enough education. Older adults do not need to be a burden on society, although they're seen as a burden on society. Um, there are significant benefits to society if older people, sorry, older adults are educated. Although Confucian values strongly influence Chinese society, we can see that these values are changing through younger people's attitudes. So hopefully we'll start seeing those Confucian values and particularly Buddhist values breaking down. Um, um, the Chinese government should consider investing into research to determine gross domestic product value. Um, older adults in rural China contribute to, the, to their economy, just to sort of realise that um, they are a valuable resource to, to the country. And the Chinese government must pay more attention to the imbalance of older adult education across the whole nation, especially in the rural areas of China. Do we have time? Um, how long have we got? About another five minutes? Um, you're about negative seven minutes. Before. Seven minutes behind. Um, I think. Shall we, shall we do yeah. this activity? Because we're just running behind <coughs> for seven minutes. Yes, we can try. Okay, all right. Guys, so I just want to do another activity. This is an activity, um, just very quickly, um, that uh, is used in the University for Third Age in China. And it's called Shu Fa, which you guys might know it as calligraphy. Oh, okay. Um, and we have um, the three girls have actually been educated in Shu Fa. When uh, they went through, was it primary or middle school? Primary, primary school. Um, so just get a, a quick lesson. Um, we've only got four brushes, so you might want to have a, a go. Um, girls, did you want to sort of explain? Is there a way to hold the pen like this? <coughs>
Uh, in Chinese, it means the end. Means what? And the second is to write this and this. And what does that mean, Jin? The second bit. Straight first. Straight first. And then. So. Yeah, straight. The next is easier. Is easier. Oh, thank you. That's great. Oh, I don't want to I just do this with this since I have to do it. The second one is easy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's great, doesn't it? It's beautiful. <laughs> yes. Yes, please. Okay. Uh, 